Hello there and welcome to my second Cosmic Ray video. And today I'd like to show you two experiments, how to detect cosmic rays or how not to detect them or detect less, but you'll see uh, how that goes in a few minutes. And before I do the experiments, however, I want to show you what I did out of the kit meanwhile, how I customized it. A uh, big thank you here uh, to muonhunter.com, to the Muon Hunter project, really cool people, I really appreciate uh, this kit here, it's great. And I'll just show you the kit quick and then we go to the experiments. So what I did in the meantime is just to put everything into a plastic box here. However, I, I don't like the box too much yet, I'm, I'll probably use another one. I'd like to have like a really clear one that you can really see the LEDs and what's happening inside, but yeah, that has time. It's it's good for now. And of course, I finished uh, the big tube assembly and built a neat little, little um, Lego car for it. And also, I left enough space to insert uh, our gamma ray shield, like a piece of lead between the tubes. Um, the gamma ray shield, the piece of lead, however, I still have to make. So this is my <laughs> simple um, lead melter or something like that. Like, yeah, you'll see. Maybe just take a little look inside. I just really screwed uh, the whole circuit board to the ground here. Also the Raspberry Pi is in there already, however, I'm still not using it. And yeah, I hacked some other little thingies. It's quite okay, actually. So, you see the screen here? I actually found <clears throat> I actually found a way to get the screen illumination working with the switch here on the side. That's really cool. And also, I added one switch to turn off the piezo speaker. So, let's start to make us our gamma ray uh, filters. Uh, disclaimer, lead is bad for you, lead is poisonous, it gets to your brain, it makes you stupid and you don't want that to happen. So be careful if you work with lead, um, you don't want to get yourself lead poisoning. The cool thing about lead though is it melts really easily, you just can use a standard blowtorch, it's the melting point is really low. And I just got these fishing uh, weights here too as my lead supply source. So I let it cool down for a bit and uh, let's see how it turned out. Oh, it's heavy. Nice. This is the big one. It's really heavy, it's almost a kilo. After finishing our lead um, gamma ray filters, um, I just put electrical tape around it just to be a bit more protective because you know it's bad for you, you shouldn't touch it too much either. Um, but here the Lego concept comes into play again, it's great. I just made a, like a little second story for the Lego, with the Legos for the lead, just push it inside. Now this thing should filter out gamma rays. Also on the small one, it's already inside, they got quite heavy, it's almost one kilo of lead that I made into these two filters here. And it's connected to the kit, um, I'll do some reference measurements and then we're ready for the experiments. Well in the first experiment I would like to check uh, or test for the influence of matter on cosmic ray muons. So I told myself I'll take a big bucket full of water and 
place the detector underneath the water and the angle really should be that all the muons that pass the detector have to pass through the water. I'm not really sure if I'll get results here because it's not that much water obviously. Um, but I thought, you know, water has some really good um, applications in nuclear uh, science, for example. It's a really good neutron moderator. Uh, we got almost 30 centimeters of water depth. Depth, whatever. So, let's see. I'm not really sure if this will get me any results, but... I did a two-hour reference check, which got us uh, 6.666 muons per minute. And right now I'm still counting, I'm at around 50 minutes so far. Let's wait till it goes to 2 hours and then we see the results. Okay, this is interesting. Well, it's uh, 2 hours uh, after the start of the test now. It already is getting dark, so I put up a floodlight. And the results I'm getting are weird. I'm getting more muons through the water than without the water. Just a little bit. It's uh, Now through the water I have 6.992 muons per minute. Without the water I had 6.666 muons per minute. That's really interesting. I did this experiment with the smaller setup and the smaller water tank a few times in the past. And I do get different results. Sometimes I had less, but I did have most of the times more. So my theory is that the muons kind of hit or interact with uh, molecules in the water and maybe split them up and like cause secondary radiation again or something. I'm really not sure. I have to research this uh, deeper. That's interesting. Cool. Just a last view on the screen here. We passed 120 minutes, and yeah, it's still counting. Well, that's the first experiment. And for the second one, I also want to check the influence of matter on the cosmic rays. But this time we'll take much more matter. We'll take like a small mountain. So what's the best way to get uh, beneath a mountain? You could drive to, through a tunnel, and that's what we're doing now. I'm here with my wonderful sister Steffi. Say hi, Steff. Hello. <laughs> She's my driver for this experiment. And yeah, it's all a bit shaky. We're in a car and we're going through a tunnel now. It's a rather small one. Um, it's the Sonnenberg Tunnel in central Switzerland. But I think we have about three or 400 meters of material on top of us in the tunnel. So let's see how it goes. I have my uh, detector ready here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Focus. Yeah, there it is. And I have like my notes and the stopwatch on my phone. So that's how we do it. Okay, we're entering like a first small tunnel, but the big one is coming right after there. As soon as we enter the big one, I'll write down the muon counts, counts we have so far. And um, I'll start the stopwatch. Okay, we have 37 muons and I'm starting the stopwatch. Muons entry, 37. Okay, now we're in like about in the middle of the tunnel and we have 39 muons. So it's really nothing's happening. Almost nothing. It's cool, it's working. Okay, we're exiting the tunnel almost. Let's say now. Stop the stopwatch. Check the muons. We have 40 muons. Exit. Okay, we're making a quick U-turn here to make a second pass through the tunnel. In the meantime, I calculated our results and we have 1.78 muons per minute in the tunnel. Well, we only had three muons during the time we drove through the tunnel. It's really working. It's much less muons than I have normally. The average is 6.666, just to remember. Uh, it's cool, I'm happy. It's really working. Okay, second pass. Entering the tunnel in three, two, one. Start the stopwatch. Check for new ones. We have three till now. Okay. Let's see. 
I think we're like in the middle of the tunnel again. Yeah, that's the lowest point down here. And I only have one mule until now on this pass. So it's really working, really cool. So we proved that matter stops muons. Well, you need a lot of matter for it, but it works. And we're exiting the tunnel in three, two, one, now. Muon count is five. And the time was one minute, 30 seconds. Okay, I did the math again. We had two new ones during the pass in the tunnel in one minute, 30 seconds. That gets us 1.33333 mu ones per minute in the tunnel. So it's much less than the average count that you have if you just place it outside or like even inside. Actually, I did this average inside. It was inside a room with a thin uh, metal roof. But I don't think that that has any influence. The mountain certainly does. So enough matter means less muons. Awesome. In this sense, uh, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you soon for future videos. Bye.